I'm sure you remember these from your childhood. This uh, is an Amiga 1200 right here. And um, as many people probably remember it, they switched it on and got this screen. Um, this is asking for these stupid horrible things, floppy disks that you stick in the drive and wait ages for them to load. Um, thankfully these days there is a fantastic, well I say new, it's not really, but a fantastic way to stick an upgrade onto these systems uh, and bring it a little bit more up to date. It is a 1992 computer and um, many people have very fond memories of it and still enjoy it today because of the uh, nostalgia more than anything else. Um, Basically, you need to get yourself one of these. This is a IDE to SD card or compact flash card, should I say, reader, with a compact flash card. These cost nothing, and you can put in a pretty much a virtual hard drive inside your Amiga. Um, so this video is going to show you how to set up one of these on one of these if you don't have any of these. Uh, by using your PC and something like this, an SD or a card reader for a PC to plug it into the USB. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick this in here first and then I'll show you how to, uh, how to get this running so it'll work on your Amiga. Um, I mean it's an absolute fantastic opportunity to do this because you don't require the use of the floppy drive or any actual real Amiga discs. Um, it's much faster and also gives you the opportunity to download additional software and enhancements using the comfort of, the, of your actual computer with an internet connection than uh, struggling away on the Amiga itself. So, um, right, without further ado, uh, what are you going to need to do? it? Well, obviously you're going to need a real Amiga 1200 and you're going to need a very excellent ID compact flash adapter with the 2.5 inch IDE cable on there with an actual compact flash card as well. Uh, 4 gigs seems to be your absolute maximum. There are ways to use bigger ones, um, but if you just want to keep safe, then uh, call it 4 gig with two, 2 gig partitions involved in that. There is other file systems you can download to increase the size of that. I mean, I remember once having a 10 gig hard drive on my Amiga working perfectly fine with things like professional file system. Uh, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to stick with a 4 gig one limit of the most. 4 gig is massive amounts for the Amiga anyway. We're talking 20 years ago, so most the, most people had 20 megabyte hard drives, 100 megabyte hard drives. Um, and the final bit of hardware you're going to need is a, some kind of flash card reader for your PC. Little USB jobs like on that picture do the job absolutely perfectly. Software, you're going to need WinUAE Amiga Emulator. If you know anything about Amigas, you probably already have this installed. If you don't, then uh, you need to go and install it. Uh, for WinUAE to work, you need Kickstart ROM files. Now, these are technically still commercial products and as such can't be legally downloaded. However, they are easily found via torrents and a quick Google search. They are everywhere, so don't worry about it. I mean, as, if you have a real Amiga, you've got a license to use it anyway. And the software for an Amiga that will dump the ROM file to a disk that you can use on WinUAE. Um, but that's a lot of hassle and it's actually easier just to download a, a copy. Uh, as well as the ROM files, you're going to need the full set of Workbench discs. Um, we're going to cover 3.1 in this tutorial, but 3.0 works just the same. Um, so obviously try and get the same version of ROM and um, Workbench as what your Amiga actually has. If you've got a Commodore A1200 with the older Amiga logo, it's probably 3.0, whereas if you've got the newer Amiga logo, the ESCOM brand, you've probably got 3.1. Uh, despite that, Workbench 3.1 does seem to work okay on 3.0 ROM. Uh, if you happen to use those set of discs. Uh, this tutorial is going to be on 3.1. So, where we start? Um, we're going to start on WinUAE. Uh, um, we are in a situation now where the compact flash card is plugged into the PC with the card in it and the PC can see it. First thing we're going to need to do is head over to the configurations option in WinUAE and we're going to create a new configuration file. Um, I'm just going to call this here the my real A1200, and then we're just going to save as and choose a file name such as real A1200. Ignore the rest; they're just me other Amiga profiles I've got set up on there. Lots of daunting options down the left-hand side in WinUAE. For the sake of this, uh, you don't need to worry about really most of those. Um, you just do the Quick Start tab and just choose that you've got an A1200. The main thing you need to do is to point WinUAE to your actual Kickstart ROM file. So uh, I want to just, just select where you've downloaded that to, and it'll happily use it. 
and the most important thing is that we need to add the hard drive that we are using. Uh, this is going to mount the actual device itself. Um, I heavily recommend you unplug any other removable devices from your system. So you've only got your system drive and the compact flash drive installed in there. Otherwise, if you make a mistake and choose the wrong one, you're going to wipe another flash card or another removable device. Uh, look at the size. I've got a 4 gig one in here, so it's mounted at 3.7 gigs, so that's close enough. Um, very important, choose a HD controller's ID 0, otherwise the Amiga will not be able to find it. Head over to the configurations and just save it in case you need to go back in there. So what you need to do next is just head over to the floppy drives, ensure that your speed is set to turbo, this will make things a lot faster. Uh, you can have it at no that's normal speed for compatibility, but for the use of just workbenches, there's, there's absolutely no need, you might as well take advantage of some extra speed here. And what I want to do is I want to mount the workbench install disk as your DF0, um, and then just choose OK. This should then now start the emulation, and we're going to boot up the install floppy disk on the virtual Amiga emulated and from within here we just go into the install disk into the HD tools and into HD toolbox where we're going to prep the drive to function on the Amiga. Initially the drive comes up as unknown, there's no idea what it is so we just need to define new and we're going to read the configuration. Don't worry about the size being completely wrong, it's 4 gigs too big for the Amiga but it doesn't matter, it's okay. Very importantly that we do save changes to the drive before we partition it, otherwise it doesn't keep the changes. Um, for the partition, I'm just going to keep the default two 2 gig partitions here and I'm just renaming them over to DH0 and DH1 to keep it standard. Very important you press return to accept those settings. Um, this one's optional but I, I'm changing the max transfer rate to 1F and, 1 and 4 Fs. Uh, this saves corruption on larger files that you're copying over to there. We did this on real hard drives on the Amiga as well. It seemed to make things run a little bit better. Uh, I'm not sure if it has any performance problems, but your flash drive is probably going to be faster than most hard disks would have been anyway, so I recommend you change that. Um, and that's all we're going to do in there, and then we're going to save the changes to the drive. Um, I'm going to press F12 now on the WinUAE, which brings up the main WinUAE menu, and I'm going to reset the Amiga. It's equivalent to doing a Control Amiga Amiga reboot. I'm going to hold down both mouse buttons just to bring up the early boot menu, and I'm just going to check in boot options that we can see the Amiga hard drives listed in there, and we can. So I'm going to boot again. Uh, we're once again booting off the install 3.1 disk because the hard disk is only partitioned at this stage. It's absolutely not going to work yet. Um, so, if all's gone well in a second, we should see the drives pop up as non-DOS disks. So, that's showing that it has mounted them, but it doesn't know what they are because we need to format them. So, um, just going to do that now. Just going to do quick format on them. There's absolutely no point doing a full format. It'll be here all day and it'll serve no purpose whatsoever. DH1 then. Just noticed I've called that 3.0, it's actually 3.1, it's just a volume label anyway, just for consistency. Um, just naming them System 3.1, I'm going to format this one as well, and I'm going to name this one Work. It's what the general standard was, but obviously just do what you want. It's a uh, good thing about the Amiga is that you can set it up exactly how you want it, not how the uh, not how Amiga and Commodore wanted it. So. Um, and there we have it, DH1 is just initialising now, and once this is done, we are now left with two empty partitions, both of 2 gig in size, which not much by today's standards, but by Amiga standards is a wealth of volume. So let's just start running the um, operating system install now. Um, you can install it manually, but I'm just going to go through the standard installation. Um, it just dumps the contents of the, uh, the six workbench disks, the extras and everything, onto your system 3.1. Uh, by calling it that and DH0, the installs picked it up automatically as a drive you're going to do it to, so I'm just going to do that. Uh, I'm going to install to system 3.1 there, so yes to that. Uh, I'm not bothered about any printers, 
Uh, because we're in the UK, I'm going to choose a British key map we can choose for later on. And now it's going to ask me for the workbench disk. So to change the disk, I'm going to hit F12 in WinUAE and just slide that across so you can see it. And I'm going to click on the file request and just choose the, the workbench disk. It's uh, that one, workbench 301 ADF. Okay, that. No need to click proceed, uh, the Amiga will pick it up automatically once it's mounted and then it'll start copying. So, um, yeah, basically it's now just going to copy everything over from all the workbench disks. Once it's done that, it's going to um, go through each individual disk, extras, locale, storage, uh, and then ask you back for the install disk again. And just copy basically everything over there in the, in the relevant locations. So once we're done, uh, it says you're complete, so we can proceed and reboot the Amiga. Um, I'm just going to F12 again inject that install disk, otherwise it'll boot off that one first, and I want it to boot off the hard disk itself. Okay, now we have it, that's just booted up Workbench from the hard disk. Very basic 3.1 setup, nothing much in there yet. There you go, a whole Less than uh, 3 megabytes is the whole operating system in there. Very small by today's standards. So, what are we going to do next? Well, um, as you've got the compact flashcard installed in the PC, let's mount a PC drive for your host system that Workbench can access. And it gives you the opportunity to get everything across there that you, you want. So, we're just going to add a directory in this case in UAE. Just an F12 to bring up the menu. Call it DH2 because it's the next one, call it host, and I'm just going to select my software directory in WinUI. I've downloaded a load of things in there that we can uh, we can copy across. There it is. Now, for that take effect, we just need to give the Amiga another reboot so it picks up the mounted drives. And the hard disk should boot again. And there we go. This time we've got a host in there as well, which contains all the PC stuff. A lot more in there than what's shown. You need to do a show all files because PCs don't use the dot info icons to see everything. So yeah, we've got quite a lot in there. Main thing is to um, get LHA over because that way you can access stuff from Aminet. So I'm just copied LHA executable over and just as a demo I'm just gonna unpack a little game which I've just downloaded off Aminet from just downloaded onto my PC's host drive and I'm just extracting that into the RAM now just to show you and then I'm just gonna drag that across into my work partition onto the flashcard and then just delete it from the RAM because I've only got two megabytes here just for the space to just check it works And yep, that seems to start it up quite nicely. And a little workbench steroids game playing there. So just to prove, I'm going to then obviously fire this up on the real Amiga once I put the card in there, just to show that downloaded software on a PC host is copied across to a native Amiga system itself. So, uh, so that's it. Put as much stuff on there as you want. Um, set it up as far as you want, and then you can just bring it in your Amiga, and it'll work. I've put the SD card in the um, compact flash to ID adapter uh, and I'm just going to quickly show you how this uh, installs into the Amiga. Very, very simple process. Okay, so flip the Amiga over and we undo these screws at the back. Then a pretty simple process of just uh, flipping the lid. You should be able to just uh, flip everything over without actually having to unplug any cables such as the pesky ribbon cable. Uh, just here is the ID port on your Amiga, it's a 2.5 inch laptop style ID port. And there we go, that's popped in there. It's just uh, in, very important to keep red to the bottom because that's where the power is. So you could fry it if you do it the wrong way, but it's pretty obvious which way it goes. Um, the bottom of my adapter there has got a bit of rubber padding on there to sort of insulate it against the metal shielding. Okay, and uh, let's power the Amiga on now and we should see something very different. Apologies for the uh, the rubbish screen I uh, 
have I got my LCD connected up to this one yet. Uh, and here we go, that's now, instead of booting to a pink screen off my disk, you've booted into a desktop operating system. Uh, just to show uh, where we put the workbench story and the internet onto that, that is loading and working just fine, just as it was on the emulator. So what else to do? Well, there's absolutely tons of stuff you can do from here. Um, most people put flashcards in their Amigas for WHD load. From there you can download tons of floppy disk games, run them via WHD load uh, straight from the flashcard and you don't have to worry about swapping disks again, messing about the floppy disks. That does require some extra memory, so you need a memory card or accelerator in the Amiga as well, at least 8 megabytes to run some of the main AGA games or some of the newer ones. Make Workbench look better with Magic Workbench or new icons. Uh, upgrade the operating system 3.9. Well recommended if you want a, a nice desktop operating environment. Lots of other enhancements for the Workbench as well. Just look on Aminet. Um, with extra memory and stuff as well, you can plug a Wi-Fi PCMCA card in there and set up various uh, internet utilities on there. Web browsers, not really, but uh, things such as FTP, IRC, etc. do work very, very nicely on a, a classic A1200 with very minimal power, so you can configure your setup from that. But the main thing is you've got an awesome storage, fast ability in your Amiga, and it works really well. So, um, any questions, just put them in comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you for watching.